the year that's in it, liver fluke is very prevalent. The National Fluke Survey showed up that of animals that were killed in the factory, 39% of herds had at least one animal with liver fluke damage and 12% of herds had at least one animal with live liver fluke present. What we have, first of all, we have a nice healthy liver here. Um, so you can see the nice homogenous surface here and you can when the cross section through the liver here, you have nice healthy tissue, okay? Which obviously this liver is unaffected by fluke or visibly unaffected by fluke anyway. Whereas then in comparison here, then we have quite a badly damaged liver, okay? So you have areas of consolidation here and then looking through the cross sections of the liver, we've greatly increased um, bile ducts, okay? And we have some calcification here as well from scar tissue secondary to the liver fluke, okay? Now, Obviously, this animal's performance with the healthy liver is going to far exceed this animal here with a damaged liver, okay? Now, obviously, there's a value in terms of the offal as well, that this liver can't go for human consumption, whereas this can. But just in terms of animal performance and animal thrive, an animal with a, a damaged liver like this is going to have decreased average daily gains in comparison to an animal with a healthy liver that it doesn't, isn't compromised by a parasite burden. In terms of dosing cattle, I suppose there's no one-size-fits-all approach. There's probably 40 or 50 different products that would work perfectly well for treat, treating animals. It's just to get the right combination for your farm and the type of cattle you have. Animal Health Ireland, for the last two years, there's been a, a parasite TAZA, and basically it, it's a free consult there. If a farmer signs up with their local vet, they can get a free consult and they get free dung sampling as part of that as well. So they get two free faecal egg count tests, which is brilliant for assessing the parasite burden on their farms and maybe the effectiveness of their dosing regimes. But it also lets them identify risk areas on their farm and then also um, come up with an appropriate dosing plan for the risks that exist on their individual farm with their local vet that's aware of the issues on their farm and the history of the farm and the area as well. You'd be surprised when you sit down, there's very, very few people doing it 110% right. You know, and hopefully with this scheme then, they can come up with a plan that's practical for the farmer and that hopefully is going to benefit them then financially as well in terms of animal performance and production as well on, on farm.